1934 Havana. Let's go back. What, what can you tell me when you're just a little girl? Well, I was a very happy girl. I was the first one to be born from my parents. And uh, I was uh, in school, uh, in Hebrew school in Cuba for six years, you know. And the school name was Teodoro Herzl, which was one of the, uh, you know, Israelis, you know, big, you know, uh, how you call the uh, image, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, was called after, the school was called after, you know, Theodore Herzl. So I had a basically six years of uh, schooling, you know, elementary schooling. And then from there, I went to uh, the uh, high school in Cuba. We have several high schools. I went to a high school in La Vibora, which was a town near Havana, because uh, the Havana High School, my mother <laughs> was very frightened that, you know, it was too many commotions and, you mm -hmm. know. So we went to a small, you know, school, high school in La Vibora, yeah. in Cuba. And then from there, I went to Instituto Edison, which uh, I had my education in, you know, uh, in high school, partly, but, you know, mainly in secretarial work, mm -hmm. you know, which I spent four years there, you know, doing my secretarial work. Now, what did your dad do for a living? My father was a jeweler, mm -hmm. you know. He came from uh, Syria, you know, to Cuba because he had, you know, uh, a brother that was already in, in Cuba waiting again for visa to come to the United States, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, he landed there because of his, you know, brothers the, being there, you know, and uh, he met my mother. In Cuba, right? In Cuba. Okay. Now, when, when did your dad come over to Cuba? What year was uh, it? It looks like it was in the 20s. Okay. Yeah. Did he ever tell you why they yeah. decided to send him? Did his family come with him or did he come alone? He came alone. Okay. His brothers were already in Cuba. Okay, his brothers were here. His parents, though, did not come. Exactly. Then thereafter, you know, they brought their parents, okay. you know, from okay. Syria. And, and why was it that they were coming? What was the problem? Well, you know, I mean, probably the same problem as we have anywhere. <laughs> yeah. You know, especially in Europe and in Asia and in, you know, all around the world, you know, anti-Semitism. So did he talk at all about that trip that he made? He was a young man, I take it. He was only 13 years old mm. when he came to Havana. he came alone. He came alone and uh, he went to school right away. Yeah. Yeah. Did, he, did he talk about that trip, though, at all? No. What it was like? He never did. He never did. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. And what did you do for fun as a little girl? I played piano. I sang, you know. Uh, mainly, you know, I mean, my mother, she was a real, you know, I mean, uh, musical person, you know, and he wanted for us to, you know, be musical too, so I spent five years playing piano, you know. So you had two brothers and a sister. That's correct. Older or younger? Uh, I'm the oldest one. My mother, she loved to, you know, sing and, yeah. you know, we were performing in school a lot, you know. Do you still play? You still? A little bit, not yeah. as you s Did you, know. you perform, you know, when in, you were younger? Yeah, yeah, with my sister. Besides the piano, do you play anything else? No. Just the piano. And your sister would sing with you? Yes. Did she also play the piano? Yes. Now, your mom's family, were they in Cuba, your grandparents? Yes. Okay. Yes. Tell me about your grandparents. Well, I never met my grandfather. He was, you know, he died before, you know, I met him. You you, know. Do you know what he did for a living in Cuba? Yes. He was a, a writer and a photographer. Ah, okay. Okay. What about, tell me about Grandma. Grandma was uh, a homemaker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, um, after college, did you go to work? Very little. Okay. Very little because, you know, uh, 
I met Maurice, my husband. Okay. You know, and he didn't want me to work. Now, where did you meet Maurice? I met him at my house, at my home. You know, during a uh, a party that my parents, you know, had. You know, and he was brought up, you know, to meet one of my girlfriends because uh, she was a tall girl. You know, and. You know, in Cuba, you know, men are not as tall as here in the United States. So, and she was really tall. And then this friend of ours, you know, uh, say, well, I have somebody that, you know, it's the right person for her. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I think this was the time that, you know, probably, you know, uh, my family, you know, was happy to have, you know, the kids growing up, you know, and meet, you know, people. Right, right. Now, when you were little, and who was the president when you were small? Uh, Grau San Martin. Okay. And then um, when Castro started to come into power, who was the president at that time? At that time, Batista. Fulgencio Batista. Okay. And do you remember what it was like when all of the... Uh, this was going on with Castro trying to take over control? Yes, yes. What, what was it like then? Well, it was frightening, you know, but at the same time, we thought, you know, since Batista was, you know, a dictator, we were going to be freed from dictatorship, you know. And Castro, at that time, he seems to be the leader of, you know, uh, a, um, a group that wanted to, you know, make uh, Cuba, I mean, free mm -hmm. from the regime of Batista. So it was, you know, we believed that, you know, it was going to be a change. And then what was it like when Castro took over? Bad, very bad, yeah. bad. He took, you know, I mean, people's businesses, you know, over businesses, you know, and uh, he cut relation with the United States he shoot people, he got, you know, I mean, my brother, you know, my oldest brother, you know, in prison. And what was that for? Well, he was in the University of Havana, and of course he was in, in the underground fighting against, you know, Fidel Castro. And he had, you know, people around him that were caught at the same, you know, with the same problem, you know. Mm -hmm. and uh, and. At one time, you know, one of his friends, you know, was caught up by the, uh, you know, uh, I will call the uh, secret police of, you know, Fidel Castro. And uh, my brother, innocently, he said that it, he was his friend. Once you're a friend of a friend, you know, mm -hmm. it happens that, you know, he got in, you know, into problems and they gave him four years in Isle of Pine, which is a, a little island you know, on the outside of Havana, you know. So basically and he's like made an example so nobody else would start up. Exactly. Was there any talk amongst the civilians quietly about the dissatisfaction with Castro or was everybody just afraid to? They were frightened because they have, you know, like, you know, I mean, in the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. they had people that were, you know, ag against Batista and for Fidel Castro. And those people were, you know, like emissaries of Fidel to let them know which family were, you know, had contra-revolutionary, you know, people in mm -hmm. their family. Now you and Maurice get married. 1957. And what were you guys doing at that time for a living? Well, Maurice was in the store that, you know, he, they sell furniture. So it was a furniture store. Right. Right. You came to the United States? Uh, January the 8th, 1961. Tell me about the making the decision that you're going to come to the United States and what did your family think and how was this, you know, all come about? Well, we were frightened that at any time my husband was going to be involved, you know, by the Fidel, you know, people, you know, I mean, was they were, you know, checking his business, you know, and uh, as a matter of fact, you know, they had, you know, people, 
you know, in front of his business, checking him out, in and out of what was he doing, if he was, you know, since he was related to my brother that was already a prisoner, you right, know, right. if he was also in the counter-revolution. Okay, so then you, you knew it was time to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very much like. Okay, so did, did you have any problem getting out? Well, we had one problem, yes. The problem was the two kids. One was a 18 months and the other one was three years old, a boy and a girl. And at that time, they never had traveled before, so they didn't have papers. Mm. Okay, so we spent a whole night in the uh, American Embassy in Havana trying to get visas because we have, you know, already our visas, but the kids were very little and they never traveled. Mm -hmm. So we were online, you know, for 24, almost 24 hours, waiting for visas for our children. But then you were able to get them without any problem? Yes, fortunately, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, let's go back a minute. When you guys got married, you um, honeymooned, honeymooned in New York City. That's right. Now, there was no problem at that time leaving Cuba and coming no. back to Cuba. No. That was your first trip to the United States? No. No, I went with my mother and my brothers, you know, to New York before, okay. ahead of time. And when you, when you got to New York, what was it like in the city there? New, New York City, it was probably this, as big as Cuba. New York City was the city that I love. Yeah. It was, there is nothing like New York. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a Dallas side right now and I love Dallas, but New York is New York. Yeah. Broadway and, you know, theaters and everything. And you guys, when you first came to the United States, when you, when you got out, did your family come with you? I, I know your husband and children, but what about your mom, dad? Yes, my mom was already here, you know, because my father, you know, rest in peace, he, he took one of my brothers, you know, to Miami to get in school, you know, and uh, of course, unfortunately, you know, the rest of the family was in Cuba, my sister and her, you know, husband, and uh, my brother that was, you know, in jail. Now, eventually, did you all get out? Did yes. everybody get out? Yes, okay. the whole family. So when you went to uh, Miami, mm -hmm. and then you guys wound up in Dallas, were you glad about going to Dallas at the time, or did you want to stay in Miami? No, I was glad to, you know, come to Dallas. I mean, for me, there was not a problem as long as we could get a job. So you come to Dallas, and what was that like? Wonderful. We had a wonderful welcome. It was a great experience. The Jewish family, you know, helped us, you know. We had a, an apartment already ready with food and, you know, everything we needed, you know. Even flowers on our table was just a great experience. And how long did it take before you guys were able to get jobs and whatnot? A month. A month? Okay. Yeah. You know, so you acclimated to uh, Texas really well then? Yes. Now, did your mother and the rest of your family come to Texas eventually? After us. Yeah. After, after you. us, you know, looking for a job, you know, yeah. my yeah. father, you know, and uh, you know, looking for a job and a schooling for my old, my youngest brother, yeah. and then my sister and her husband. Now, when you were just a little girl, World War II broke out. Did that affect your family at all in Cuba? Well, yes. My father lost his business. You know, he was in the jewelry business, and he lost his business. You know, situation was hard. You know, yeah. I was a little girl, though. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember too much about the World War because. You know, the parents didn't talk about it. They didn't want to frighten us. And Cuba was so, co I mean, close to the United States that we have to be very careful. Yeah, yeah. You know. So what did your dad do? When the, uh, uh, during that time, yeah. he, he started, you know, uh, making jewelry, mm -hmm. you know, at home, you know. And he got a partner that had a, you know, uh, a little, you know, working place where they, you know, started, you know, doing small jewelry, right, you know. Right, right. Now you say he had lost his business during the World War II time. Was that because of the war or was that... Be yeah, the war causes a lot of businesses to close, you know, because the situation was bad, you know. Okay, I People see. were uh, making lines to get food, you know. I mean, right, right. 
we were, you know, so close, 90 miles from the United States, we yeah. were, you know, frightened. Now, in Dallas, um, did you get involved with the Jewish community? Well, you know, when we came in, yes, uh-huh. Yeah. It certainly did, you know. And and how did it uh, how did it feel knowing that your family was considered like the first Jewish family from Cuba that came here without any support group? It, it was a surprise. Yeah, yeah. It was a surprise because we were not frightened, right. really. You know, uh, we were educated. Right. My parents educated us real well, you know, and I had you know uh, even at home, you know. An English, you know, uh, professor that came to, you know, teach us English, because yeah. my father spoke several languages beside, you know, Arabic. He spoke Hebrew, he spoke French, and English, and Spanish. Yeah. So he always believed, being 90 miles from, you know, the United States, that we should, you know, always be, you know, able to talk English. Was there an invention in your lifetime that when it came along you went, wow, how did we ever get along without that? The moonwalking, which was giving us, you know, a different, uh, how you call, idea of what maybe there was more than we thought there was. Yeah. You're talking about the moon landing the in 69. The moon 69. landing, yeah. yeah. It was unbelievable. My children were little and, you know, that night we didn't sleep. The whole house was, yeah. you know, watching. Excited. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was very exciting. What did you think about the Cuban Missile Crisis? Well, I don't want to talk about it because, you know, I have my feelings that there was a big mistake. That, unfortunately, the president, you know, back up when he was, you know, going to have, you know, the Cubans liberated Cuba because they were waiting for the planes, you know, and uh, I mean, it never happened. Did the Kennedy assassination affect you at all? Yes, yes, I was working for Neiman Marcus, you know, and uh, I was working on the, you know, mezzanine floor, mm -hmm. you know, and all of a sudden, you know, there was a commotion at the store that there was a, you know, something happening, you know, and of course, they didn't tell us exactly at that time what was going on. But all of a sudden, the store was closed, and we heard that President Kennedy was shot. Mm. And uh, the first thing that I heard, it was, it was that the Cubans had shot <laughs> Kennedy. <laughs> that was the first thing that we heard. So we, you know, we heard that, you know, it was a Cuban. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, we better hide. <laughs> So, no, we went to pick up our kids that were in the nursery school, you know, and uh, we were very, very sad yeah. because uh, it was a, a very bad thing that happened to the yeah. United States. At the time that Oswald, you know, was already killed, Marina Oswald, you know, went to Neiman Marcus and she was a, a very tiny girl, you know, I mean, young woman, you know. And I was working for the mezzanine, which was, you know, the place where, you know, people, you know, a junior size. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, my, you know, manager told me, you're going to have somebody very important that you're going to take care of. <laughs> I said, okay, you know. And um, when she came to my room, I said, I think I know this woman, you know, I have seen her somewhere. Well. She started to speak Russian to her translator. And I say, oh my God, I think she's Marina Oswald. And I took care of her, you know. Two men were in the front, you know, of the store waiting for her. And uh, I say, how come? Well, she was interviewed and she didn't have any closing, you know, nice clothes right, in that right. theater. So I, I dress her up. <laughs> you and Maurice uh, have the two kids and four grandkids. Yeah. What advice does Grandma have for the next generation? To make sure to love always America. 
and be very, very, you know, proud to be Americans. Because there is no other country like America. That's great. Well, you did a great job. Thank you. Thanks for doing this today. Thank you.